and there's the slide. So good afternoon, guys. Welcome to uh, this afternoon's uh, coal regs revision. And we're going to do uh, two rules today, uh, rule 11 and rule 12. Um, and that's because rule 11 is, is very, very short, but worthy of note nevertheless. Um, rule 11, the rules in this section apply, shall apply to vessels in sight of one another. So this is talking about the manoeuvring rules. Um, and so what? Anyone want to kick in with a so what? It'd be carnage without any rules, wouldn't it? Uh, it would be. But if you remember rule four said that these rules shall apply to all vessels in all conditions. Whereas these rules, which are, uh, let me just run through the actual rules for you. So rule, this is now talking about um, rules for sailing vessels, overtaking, head on situation, crossing situation, action by the giveaway vessel, stand on vessel, and responsibilities between um, vessel. So rules uh, 12 to 18 uh, only apply to vessels in sight of one another. So the, the point of this is that you need to be able to see the other vessel in order to understand what your aspect is, what your what the situation is in relation to the other vessel before you can apply it. So if you detect the vessel by radar, for example, or AIS, or you hear a fog signal, then these rules do not apply. Yeah, another part of the rules apply. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. And conversely, the rest of the rules that we've spoken about so far apply in all conditions. So they continue to apply even in restricted visibility. Happy? Yep. Okay, so uh, when two sailing vessels are approaching one another so as to involve risk of collision, one of them shall keep out of the way of the other as follows. Uh, what's the important part of that rule? So this is rule 12, part one, or rule 12, part A. The rule applies to one of them rather than both of them, or the action. No, the rules apply, well, the rule applies to both of them, I think. But what what condition has to be? What condition is mandated before the rule applies here? It's subtle, it's subtle but it's important. Uh, so, that they're approaching each other. They're not going away from each other, but they're they're actually closing on each other. So as to do what? There's a risk of collision. Yeah. So there's a risk of collision. So it doesn't it. You, you, the rule doesn't apply if there is no risk of collision. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the first thing you have to do when you sight another vessel is to establish whether risk of collision exists or not. Then you can apply the manoeuvring rule. You don't apply the manoeuvring rule if risk of collision doesn't exist. Does that make sense? And if we remember back to what we were talking about last week, the way we establish whether risk of collision exists is if it's on a steady bearing, and that if we're manoeuvring close or the other vessel is quite large, then risk of collision may exist even if there is a bearing change. Does that make sense? Yeah. So everything we've done today cover is, is important to understand before we then start understanding what we're doing with the manoeuvring rules. Okay. Uh, and now it says, uh, this, this is actually covered in the, the last part of the rule, but I just thought it was worth clarifying so we're all on the same hymn sheet. Um, which tack am I on? Whether you're on starboard tack or port tack, and the tack which you're on depends on the side of the boat which the wind is blowing over. So we talk about a starboard tack boat, a boat which has got the wind on her starboard side, and her mainsail is over on the port side. And a port tack boat, the wind is on her port side and the mainsail is over on the starboard side. We all, that's all common. We all understand that, yeah. Um, yeah. The Germans, for example, refer to it the other way. So they refer to the, so that a German talking about a port tack boat would, would expect the, uh, 
we would expect the wind to be on the um, starboard side. So they refer to the side of the boat which the sail is on as the tack which they're on. Does that make sense? So it can be confusing mm. if you're discussing um, sailing rules with um, with people of other languages because they do have a 180 degree view on on the terminology. Mm -hmm. Happy? Yeah. But today, yep. starboard tack, wind on the starboard side, port tack, wind on the port side. Um, when both have the wind on the same side, Uh, the vessel which is to windward shall keep out of the, the way of the vessel which is to leeward. This is the wrong slide, isn't it? <laughs> There's one. Okay. <laughs> Don't know what's happened here. Hmm. The vessel will... That's it. No. So, okay. So, port and starboard attack. So, uh, da -da 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 -da. So ignore the writing here. So the vessel which has the wind on her port side shall keep out of the way of the vessel which has the wind on the starboard side when they're on opposite tacks, yeah? In this, in this case, the vessel with the wind on her port side is going to alter course to starboard to keep clear of the vessel which is on the starboard tack. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when both vessels have the wind on the same side, um, the vessel which is to windward shall keep out of the way of the vessel which is to leeward. So both, the, this, the picture on this slide um, uh, refers to this situation. So the windward vessel has to alter, would normally go under the stern of the leeward vessel. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then if a vessel with the wind on the port side sees, so she's a port tack vessel, the vessel to windward and cannot determine with certainty whether the other vessel has the wind on her port or starboard side, she'll keep out of the way of the other. So this is a common situation when you see a boat to windward and he's sailing towards you with a uh, spinnaker up. Um, and the reason this rule is, is established, so I've, I've drawn some cartoons on the right, so um, we have a vessel coming down from the, the top of the page with a spinnaker up and a vessel crossing the page on the port tack and she can't establish what side the uh, main cell is out on. So if the situation exists where he goes, the other boat is to windward, therefore I stand on and the um, the vessel sailing with the wind on the starboard tack says, oh, I am to windward, I'm going to give way, all's well and good, yes? Yeah. Um, if he assumes he's going to keep clear and alters to keep clear and the vessel alters to keep clear, all well and good, yes? Yeah. However, in the third situation, where the vessel to windward is actually on a starboard tack and he says hey I'm on a starboard tack that guy's clearly on a port tack I'm going to stand on and the vessel on the port tack says he's to windward and he stands on you see that there's a danger where the collision could exist so always if you're not sure and your vessel on the port tack you alter to take into account the situation where the, the, wind, the windward vessel is on the starboard tack and should be standing on does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then uh, the final part of the, the rule uh, just defines whether we're... Uh, uh, yeah, it's quite complicated. Tack. And it says, for the purposes of this rule, the windward side should be deemed to be the side on opposite to that which the main cell is carried on. Or in the case of a square rigged vessel, the side opposite to that which the largest fore and aft sail is carried on. So it's quite clear when you've got a uh, a Bermuda rigged boat, which all the sails are rigged fore and aft, where which side of the biggest sails are over on, isn't it? So we can imagine it's normally the sail which is carried attached to the boom. 
you can tell which side of the boat that when you wear a rig boat it's not so straightforward so what they say is we're going to look at the biggest fore and aft sail so this is a fore and aft sail this is a fore and aft sail this is a fore and aft sail these are square rig sails we've got another bunch of fore and aft sails and then a large fore and aft sail at the back now i i'm not pretending i can establish which is the largest exactly but you can tell that this boat is on the starboard tack because the fore and aft sails are carried over on the port side. Does that make sense? That's what the rule's getting at? Yep. Yep. Cool. Right, I apologise for that, uh, for the um, problem with the, the slides in the middle there, but did that um, all make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Very, a very short, um, short rule today and I hope that it's one which you're all thoroughly familiar with and not, 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 not too much to be concerned about. Any, so anything anything new got, there? Just one question, um, your yeah. example of the boat with the spinnaker yeah. and the boat on the port tack which had to keep keep clear, Yeah. if you've got the boat with the spinnaker and you don't know which side their, their mainsail is but the other boat is on a starboard tack then the starboard tack boat stands on or no well so if in that situation so if this uh how can i i'll, I'll try and draw this very quickly for you um it was about two slides ago i think this is uh it is a it's a slight share screen uh You see a whiteboard now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so what we're talking about now. Is we've got a boat on a starboard tack. Mm -hmm. Boat with the spinnaker and the main set, which, which way the where the main cell is, is indeterminate. Yes. Yeah. So this boat can see this, this boat, and he says, oh, he's clearly on the starboard tack. Therefore, if he was on the, let's assume that he was on uh, the, so he's also on, on the starboard tack, then he has to give way because he's the windward vessel, doesn't he? If he's the port, on the port tack, then he has to give way because he's the port vessel. So in all okay. cases, if you see a vessel to windward and you're on the starboard tack, the windward vessel is going to have to give way to you either because he's on the port tack or because he's also on a starboard tack but he's to windward does that make sense yeah, yeah. frequently what happens though is that the boats with spinnakers just plow on well i think we, we discussed this in an earlier lesson didn't we that uh i think it's a rule two moment so um apply a bit of common sense a boat which has got a spinnaker up and and coming hurtling down to you at, uh, at 10 knots is a lot less maneuverable and agile than you are if you're a 32 foot boat on a just with a self-tacking genoa and sailing across sailing a close reach you, you can tack out the way easily can't you and yeah. ultimately it then comes down to the, the, the fact that well, if, if you don't do anything you'll still be responsibility responsible for that collision taking place you, yeah, sure. you know, the, road, the road to hell is paved to, with those who thought they had right away yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does, that, does that clear that up for you janet yes thank you very much and i, I think the other thing is probably you, you're not in a position to be able to call the other boat are they sorry if they got their spinnaker up like that, you're probably not in position to be able to call the other boat. When you hail say them. call, what do you mean? Uh, hail them. Okay, so you, that, you only really get that sort of racing thing, I think. Um, I, I wouldn't normally call starboard to a boat that was on a um, port tack because I, I'd, I'd go back to. We're going to cover it later in the week, but the, the, there's actions of the stand-on vessel and nowhere in the rules that say the stand-on vessel should shout loudly at the boat, boat vessel which is to give way. <laughs> it talks about taking early action and in any event, get, getting uh, keeping clear. 
It's, uh, yeah. it's just in racing that we shout at each other, Stuart. Uh, <laughs> oh, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Cool. Sorry about the um, cock up with the slides. I don't know what happened there. Um, well, I do. I suspect that no I, I um, deleted the wrong slide uh, when I was producing it. But, um, I'll correct the slide pack and I'll put it on the website for you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. 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 Thank you.